Hey, how you doing? Bob Books here with the Gilly Galoo. Just out in the shop. We're filling the feeders. We're doing a couple things today. Uh, we wanted to continue talking about the different winter finches that we can expect this winter based on the finch forecast. So in the feeders here, I just got our, uh, our Woodlands blend here. Uh, I know you've heard me talk about it before and stuff, but boy oh boy, the, the, everybody's going crazy for it right at the moment. So it's a, it's a cool thing. Anyway, today I want to talk about the Pine Siskin. Beautiful little bird. Uh, it's a winter finch. You can see some nice, uh, nice shot of it here. Um, very characteristic uh, of the finchy look with the tail and the beak. Very heavily streaked breast. Uh, yellow tinge underneath the wing feathers and uh, and the wing bars, and also on the tail feathers. Often you can see some yellow streaking there as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful little bird. Uh, has a nice little trill as they all come in big flocks throughout the winter. Uh, they, uh, they blend in quite well within the, the other, uh, so if they, you'll often see them in, in groups, big groups with uh, the red poles and things. And you'll often see a whole bunch of them on the ground and you'll think, gosh, what? There's some, a couple different birds there. And, and that's when you'll see that the pine siskins are mixed in with them. Uh, they do travel together and they do forage together uh, somewhat, but they are a diff obviously a different species. Really nice bird. Uh, this is an adult male, and we get into a female, and uh, a juvie there, but you can see the real pointy beak, the yellow tinge on their wings and wing bars, and then tail feathers, a wing uh, out there, very dark beak as you can see, so the different than from uh, say the hoary red pole, uh, where it's very, very bright yellow or brightish yellow, a very dark, a uh, little bit of white maybe down toward the bottom, uh, uh, closer to the head, but it's a very, very uh, dark beak. Their range is quite interesting also, uh, in that you get into, so the bright red that you see there is their breeding range, so again, uh, a far north bird, particularly up into the western Canada, up into the north of western Canada, up in the boreal forest here as well. Um, this is sort of their winter range, common winter range. You, you can see that it's, for the most part, above us most of the time. Uh, but then we do get down into the Great Lakes area here where uh, they have some, uh, some frequent, uncommon areas, as they call it. Uh, and this winter, we suspect that they'll uh, be down here in very large numbers as well. And so get kind of get ready to, to for some key ID points with these birds. Uh, you'll see them mixed in with uh, the red poles and even when with the chickadees and with the American goldfinch that stay all year. A lot of times people in the shop talk to us about goldfinch and, and sometimes think that they migrate. They do have a small migrational pattern where they they may, you know, go a little further north, go a little sur further south, but they don't sort of go to the, you know, South America and things the same like with other birds that fully migrate if you like. Um, so these uh, pine siskins will be mixed in with those. Other birds that, uh, depending on where you live, uh, if you're more rural for instance, there's a good chance that you're going to get into some gross beaks. Uh, if you're in a in suitable habitat for the pine gross beak, you may see those. You may see some white winged and uh, crossbills as well. Um, they're very distinct with their bill being bent over or crossed I should say. as they pop open the pine cones to get the seeds inside. They also will come down in the winter time, evening grow speaks, uh, and those types of birds are all going to be heading our way very, very soon. We're finding ourselves here sneaking up on uh, November the 1st here in East Ontario, and it, it's a great time of year to get your feeders filled and get ready to rock and roll for a great winter of birding. And the other thing with these years that uh, we see a lot of this, this finch eruption as it's called. Um, the reason they're here, <coughs> excuse me, the reason they're here is because lack of food in the boreal forest or not sufficient enough food in the boreal forest. So yes we feed a lot of times for uh, our pleasure uh, and that's why we really uh, have a, a lot of emphasis on the quality products and, and feeders and different 
functionality things that we have and that's why we focus so much on a high quality high grade seed that's safe for the birds but they're hungry they're going to be super hungry this year so you that's one of the key factors with uh, with them being down here is they're going to be hungry uh, they're going to also need water so you may want to think about a heated water bowl uh, we have a variety of different uh, styles and, and types of that and if you check out our youtube channel um, at uh, dot youtube slash gillygloober.com you'll find uh, a variety of different uh, topics there including heated water bowls finch feeders what makes a good finch feeder and not all kinds of things on that YouTube channel so be sure to check it out also for all the photographers out there that love taking uh, bird photography and if you're on Instagram check out birds of Gilly Galoo on Instagram and hashtag all of your photos uh, bird photography with birds of Gilly Glue. Use that hashtag and we'll perhaps pick you as a winner and showcase all of your photography. Anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by and we'll talk to you soon.